Tuesday evening on November 29th. This is the last Nerd Talk of November. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And I'm Pyrosim. We're here. It's stuff. We've got one person in chat. Hi, Tall. Good to have you. We missed you. <coughs> we did. I remember just the other day you were all like, you know who we haven't seen in a while? Tall. And it's our night for Carnage as we discuss Saints Row the Third, the game that Grand Theft Auto wishes it was. <coughs> no, the, the game that... Uh, the game that Grand Theft Auto decided it was too cool and serious to be. Right. Because they had to say something. I actually just watched um, X-Play's review of it, and most of it was, we can't tell you about or show you this stuff on television. Sorry, because guys. Because it's that awesome. Because we'll it's also that weird. We'll also be talking about our experiences playing Star Wars, The Old Republic, in last weekend's beta. Because we can do that now. The gag order's been lifted, yes. Ha, we can talk. Talk, talk. That, that is what we do on the show. That, that and is if why we are here. Really? Because I've been signing this whole time. Incessantly. I wish I could sign for you guys. And that, what? That'd be cool video content. Someone signs Nerd Talk. What, like, like an ASL interpreter? That'd be awesome. We need one of those. How much do those cost? Continuing the But By that I mean the American Sign Language. Yes. And not like that thing on chat rooms where they try to determine what you are and where you live. Right. Hi, Q. Welcome to chat. Good to have you also. Thank you for exploding our reality. Okay, then. We'll also be talking about League of Legends because, wow, stuff has happened. Because stuff. League of Legends is the only game anybody plays. Totally relevant. It is the king of games. Right. So let's get on to it. No, no need to muck about, since we have so much to talk about tonight. Starting up with Saints Row the Third. So, guys, I I was not a big believer in this. Yeah, in um, fact, when I showed you the trailer originally, you were like, what, this this is boring, this is like the wannabe Grand Theft Auto. In fact, and I didn't like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, you've had a copy of Saints Row 2 sitting on your computer. That I didn't play because of technical issues. Yeah. So, Saints Row the Third By came which I out... I mean, I couldn't run it. Okay. Came out November 15th, 2011. Uh, and, yeah, it it's released by THQ, and for those of you who've never tried a Saints Row, effectively, the, most, the best way I can describe Saints Row is take Grand Theft Auto... And stop giving a crap. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it right there. It is Grand okay. Theft Auto that's, like, gritty and realistic. Pfft. We'll do insane. Insane is more fun. Since the, and so, starting from the very... Well, from the very beginning, you're dropped into this bank heist, and the way they get around the doing this tutorial-based mission before the character creation screen is you're, like, basically in, like, a full-body suit plus giant cartoony mask. Which gives you insane amounts of armor to get you through it. And you have a voice changer it. on you. Yeah. So when you play through this opening sequence, you have no idea whether your character is male or female, because that's the point. Because uh, during the subsequential failing of the bank heist and your arrest, you get to design your character while your mug shots are being taken. Which is pretty spiffy. So I guess we'll jump into our normal review. I'm so glad we're doing this on the internet, not on FCC airwaves. Right. Graphically, the game is not fantastic. No, this definitely looks like... it. The best way we found to describe it is it's like your rock band characters decided to start robbing banks and shooting people. And even then, I've seen rock band characters with more polish. Yeah. This it, is this is like very it's like like very early generation Xbox 360 game. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like before they got the hang of how to develop HD games. The, the graphics aren't polished, but at the same time you're not really going to be taking notice because there's so much stuff going on at any given moment. Like, it, it was the rare moment in this game where my brain snapped to comment on the graphics or something in the environment, like a texture pop-in or something. Because there was just so much happening around you at any this given is, moment. This is, like, this is insane, right? So starting from the character customization screen, you get to pick... Uh, you know, they've got, like, a few, like, pre-done pre builds that basically determine, like, your race... Which you can switch once you're in the actual developer, too. You, you get six templates that you can work from that you can then customize anything about. So, body shape and type, there, there's a triangle, uh, a little pyramid there. 
I'll try and be some more accurate. With what was it? Slim. It's, or it's, it's skinny, fat, and muscular. muscular. Are so the three can, points, like, and then you can variations. Move, yep, you'll move your cursor between them, and that'll determine your body type. You can pick uh, ethnicities. Male or female. And here's where the funny bit comes in, because when you're adjusting your body type, regardless of which gender pick, you have a sex appeal bar, which has different effects depending on what gender you happen to be playing as. Sex. Let's be honest. Did anybody not crank that all the way up? I didn't. I, I didn't. didn't. I, did I didn't just to... because of what it did on the character I was playing. Well, uh, but I do this when I'm like doing any character <coughs> generation, even in The Sims, is I will go from min to max just to see what the range is, and then from there pick something like appropriate that I like, usually somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Um. But, and so that's how, just how I generate characters. Is I go, this is one extreme, this is the other extreme. Let's see what we can make from in the middle. So. Pixie was getting ready to call shenanigans on the sexual appeal bar being attached to the female character, and I was like, hold up, wait a minute, this bar also exists on the male character. You didn't believe me. And so I flipped over to check. And it's there. And it determines a certain bulge size. Nope. <laughs> what, what Which you can even... see expanding and retracting. As you move the slider, so we are we are equal opportunity in our uh, and uh, the, the, the female sex appeal bar applies to the size of her breasts. Yup. Does that and have I'm gameplay not... implications? No, none. Oh well. They're, they're I, all purely I, I was aesthetic. Min-maxing it because I assumed that potentially there's persuasion options. No, and in fact, there's no like real conversation choices in the entire game. Um, so I guess continuing graphically, the soundtrack is actually really good in this game. Uh, I'm very impressed. And, like, sp it, at key moments in the game, they are really great about bringing up the right song. Mm -hmm. So for certain missions, like, uh, what was it? There, there's a moment where you're just getting to hang out with Pierce for the first time. And, um, What I Got comes on the radio. And regardless of what character voice you picked your character and Pierce will sing along with the song and be having a great time. It's actually one of the really cool moments in the game. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, when you leap out of a helicopter and land on, uh, on the roof of a penthouse to just wipe out everyone and take over the penthouse, uh, the music choice just does a great job of amping up your adrenaline for that situation of, yeah, I'm parachuting out of this roof and I'm going to take some people out. It's, it's really great about that. They also have some really funny music choices where they need them, too. Anyway. Yeah. So, I'm still I, in character creation. I don't know about you. <laughs> go back to character I, I creation. I have to inject one more thing about character creation. That's, it doesn't actually have to do with Saints Row the Third, but in mm -hmm. the original Saints Row, for your sex decision in your character creator, you did not get male or female. You got a slider. And I gotta say, that's pretty awesome. That's cool, because, yeah, it doesn't lock you into gender binary. That's interesting. No, yeah, I, I, I like that idea. All right, then. Probably that's less practical in the modern day just because of the more higher I detail mean, meshes it, and that it'd be and more computationally animations. intensive to deform them yeah. dynamically. If you wanted in this game, you really could make a very masculine female character, though, if you wanted, because you could pick the male body type and then just use the female voice, if you want it. Wouldn't they still be call addressing you by male pronouns, though? I don't think they would. They, they purposely never did that in conversation. They always call you boss. Mm. But, there you go. It, which which it, reminds me of something I need to mention when we get to the Old Republic. The, the game also has an amazing sense of humor in that, if you wanted, you could play the entire game with the zombie voice. Which is fabulous. Yeah, you can pick whichever voice you want to assign to your character, and it doesn't matter which sex you've picked. And so you could be playing as a male character with, a female, with one of the female voices, or vice versa. And there's also this zombie voice, which sounds like... Yeah, it's gargling simple. Constantly. <laughs> I hope you like that impression I just I, did, because that was free. You know, it, it does the exact same thing that Skyrim does. You can play this entire game dressed like a maniac with the zombie voice looking ridiculous and just assume that everyone in the game is like, just do what he says or he's gonna kill us. <laughs> just treat it like it's normal, man. 
Hopefully he'll go away. He'll go away if you just let him be. Because everyone in the game will just do their normal lines with you speaking in the zombie voice. What's, what's even more ridiculous is the, the level of detail. You can, like, totally ma uh, make the character exactly how you want them. Yeah. I'm so very surprised at how detailed some of this gets and how weird some of the options are. Like, the skin color varies from every color of the freaking rainbow. Yeah, if you want to be metallic tones. If you want to be made out of sapphires in this game, you can do it. This you is, can be, you can make the Silver Surfer. You can. This do is that. literally Grand Theft Auto, where they were like, just give them all the options. We don't care. Every weird thing that was built into the engine that we didn't want to do because it would wreck the immersion, put it here. Let them do it. And they just do not give a crap. And I think that's one of the really amazing things about Saints Row. That, that's certainly the thing that I appreciated most and I thought was coolest. And so you could basically play that totally for laughs there. Mm -hmm. If that's how you want to play your game, they're not going to stop you in any way. And so after the character Hey, underscores room, and Flutter Kai, welcome to chat. It's so good to have people back. I love you, chatters. He was very sad the last two shows where there weren't people. Right. I miss you guys. It's good to have you. Except like for all... Old, who, if he listens to this show, is going to be like, hey, I'm not people. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Old did join two weeks ago. Okay, well, welcome to chat, folks. Indeed, you are a tree. I'm glad you're having fun with League. We'll talk about so, it later. How long does it take to jump out of a helicopter without a parachute? Uh, depends on how fast you're falling, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, um, how, how far into the game the... do you have to be to do that? Because That is the very second mission after the... Uh, yeah. Bank heist tutorial. Like, okay, so I guess we're in gameplay now. The the key I'm thing I'm just gonna kind of guide them through our experience here. The, the key thing that we noticed about playing Saints Row was that all of the really like epic <laughs> cool missions, the things you remember from Grand Theft Auto, Saints Row is just like, why don't we just give you those now? You start the game as as a as a serious uh, player in the world. You are a big deal. I mean, they, they start the intro with, like, the Star Wars text telling you how awesome you are. Uh, that, that the Saints are a big deal now, that they've kind of got a little bit, like, sellout corporate-ish. Yeah, no, they have a media empire. And, Th this um, is a street gang that somehow wound up with, you know, t-shirts and a record label and, they, you know, They stores. have stores, yeah. They became, like, a major criminal organization. At any rate... And a popular um, one. For some reason, this bank they decided to rob was they didn't know belonged to this other group called the Syndicate. That's apparently bigger than them and a better are better at uh, concealing their efforts. And so you get captured by these guys. <laughs> and they're like, hey, you're going to pay us 66% of all of your income or we'll kill you. And immediately, your character is like, no. Well, technically, your character's boss. Yes. <clears throat> um, so Johnny Gat basically tells him to sit and spin on it, and uh, takes over the plane and tells you guys to escape. And so, and this is how epic this game gets, because this is something that GTA would never try. You end up leaping out of the back end of one plane, falling through the air, catching your friend, only to drop her. At which point you crash back you into the airplane. Shoot through a window of another airplane. No, it's the same plane that you just fell out of. So you shoot through the window of the airplane, run through, kill everybody in that plane, then jump back out and dive down and catch her again. This is mission number two. This is, well, the mission number one, if you uh, count the first one, is the tutorial. Yeah. And, and this is what's really spectacular. Saints Row doesn't hold back because it's not realistic. You don't spend your first real mission in the game driving your cousin around so you can go bowling with him. And, and <clears throat> and what's, what's, what's really cool is, you know, I'm, I'm spending this whole thing going, oh, this is really awesome? How on earth are we going to top that? Because otherwise you're going to get, like, this major whiplash from a, a change in tone and a change in pacing. It only amps up further from there because the very next mission, you are assaulting the National Guard to raid their weapons and steal a bomb. Yep. So, At which point you are calling down computer-targeted missile strikes onto a multitude of tanks. 
So yeah, um, it just gets more and more intense from there. It's I kept playing this game because I'm like, what in the hell else could they possibly do next that will top that? Mm-hmm. What in, or the other half of the time I'm going, what in the hell did I just do? <laughs> yeah, and the critical consensus about the Grand Theft Auto games is that. Almost all of them consist of a very strong beginning and a very strong end, and then a whole bunch of boring filler in the middle. Saints Row has no filler. It is just balls to the walls 100% of the time. I suppose ovaries to the walls in my case? Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> or, you know, maybe somehow and like, have I, extra I, I've animals. heard the complaint that, Saints Row that a lot of the characters in Saints Row are just like caricatures. But they've actually done a really good job in the third game of of making who these people are matter. Like, the opening where they made fun of Pierce. You're now going to laugh at Pierce every time you see him. He was he <clears> was <throat> very much set up as the comedy relief. Yeah. Um, Johnny Gat in the cutscenes is so ridiculously cool, you're sad when you lose him. Um, let's see. Spoilers. It's the first mission. I'm sorry. Um, but everyone you meet in the game is just so weird and quirky. The computer hacker that you meet later is just so greatly entertaining. She she is an honest effort of the game creators to recreate Ed from Cowboy Bebop as an adult. And it comes off really charmingly amusing. Like, you, the one of the first times you meet her, she's sitting under the coffee table because it's like people outside can see me. This is better. By the way, throw away your cell phone. People can track you. It, it's very entertaining. It, 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 it's, it's, it's just... It's fun. I, I've, I've got to drop that bombshell now, I guess, but... Yeah, it... It, is, it has been a joy <laughs> to go through, and the, 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 the weapon choices are obviously, like, kind of out there. And over the top, we've all seen the dildo bat by now. You can buy a giant three-foot-long purple dildo, and club people with it. It bigger than three feet, <clears throat> is all I'm really? saying. It is a dildo that would not be very effective in service as a dildo. It only works for beating criminals in the face. Yeah. But you can, you can, you can have that in the game. There's other modes. There's the horde mode where you get basically attacked by prostitutes. Endless waves of them. Um, there's Dr. Genki's uh, completely ethical game show which is like a death trap simulator that you have to somehow get your character through. And while no single aspect of Saints Row is perfect... The combat is extremely unpolished, I will say that. Yeah, the combat's unpolished. The graphics unpolished. Targeting is difficult. Yeah. Um, there's glitches in the physics engine almost every time you play. Like, none of them are... None of the, these things are game-breaking, but they're all just little things that could have been polished out and while I say that, while I say this is not a perfect game and it's got flaws everywhere, the sheer experience of playing Saints Row the Third is what makes it. It is so just crazy and out there, and it's it, such a joy as a sandbox that you can do these it things. Is, it is very weird in that, it's one, it's the open world sandbox, the you go out and you do whatever, but like within the context of the... the plot. Yeah, um, it, it's also out there and weird. Um, what, what I'm trying to get at is, the, within the context of the storyline, or, or, the, or the cinematics, if you will, uh, you, you don't have really any agency over what your character is going to do in that sense. That being said, it is hilarious to watch them go. Mm -hmm. it's you, as, as you're storming the... Uh, as you're about to storm, or as you're storming the... Uh, or, or sneaking in, or whatever, the, the uh, actual guard base... Um, as soon as you discover there's bombs there or whatever... Your character's like, we're not leaving. Why? Because I'm taking this with me. And, and, and there's there's different phrases that are used depending on which voice you picked that also kind of determines her personality a little bit. Yeah. Like, I picked the Russian chick. And I played the English crime ward. And um, so, <laughs> so she comes across to me as, like, really, really crazy. <laughs> so did mine. But... So what did yours say? Oh, mine was like, wonderful, I found a new toy to polish. <laughs> This'll pepper their eggs or something? Yeah, I think that was so, one of the lines. Or or as, as, I'm, as I'm driving on the way there, she's having this conversation with the NPC uh, uh, partner character, and which basically tricks her 
into in, through the course of this conversation into thinking that this was her idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, it, it's totally great. Uh, the plot is I'm just like, as insane as you better. could as you could want it to be. The writing is extremely good. All of the parts of Saints Row definitely add up to more than it should be. And that's a great thing, when that works. <clears throat> Let's talk about difficulty, because I want to say, I in general like playing most games with the cheats on, and I played a lot of Saints Row 2, and it was like playing with the cheats on without the cheats on, and it was a blast. No, it's a very, it's a very easy game, and it's intended to be fun rather than hard. If a mission is challenging, totally chances are times, it's, bad it's this. because there's a lot of glitches here and there. But even when you die, it's not like there's severe Yeah, it's not earth-shattering. Yeah. There's In checkpoints fact, you, pretty frequently. Also, you don't lose your weapons when you die. You just take a hit to, to uh, yeah. the money. That, that's another one of the like pros that I have to give this over Grand Theft Auto. In Grand Theft Auto, you didn't want to like just run up and punch out the cop because you knew that then it was going to spawn all kinds of chaos and unless you could successfully get away, you're going to lose all your money and you're going to lose all your, your guns and your toys. In this one, it's just like... Forget it, you're released back into the wild with everything you just lost, minus a hundred bucks. Yeah, one of the funnest experiences <clears throat> I had in Saints Row 2 is just trying to get my notoriety up to maximum with the cops and maximum with the local gangs. So that is the most intense firepower you can have on you. And just surviving yep. to that point. And then, obviously, once you've done that, you die immediately. And then you're like, oh, oh yeah, it gets fun. really and crazy. There's no consequences. So you, yeah. you have the freedom to just play around like that. I, I hit a point when I had, like, four matadors chasing me. Like, the, they're brutes, the huge guys that take multiple clips to bring down. I, I really angered the wrestling gang. Uh, it's... it's I, I, I keep going back to this theme, but they just really don't care to box you into anything or trying to make you take this seriously at all. No, right from the start, you have every option available in the city. If you want to go do something, just go there's, do it. There's no area that's blocked off until you unlock it. No. It's, we're, we're, not, we're not dancing around this. Just go. The entire world is open. Go do it. And I really appreciate that because unlocking all that crap is time-consuming. Um, but there's also, like, it rewards you with, what was it, reputation points or something? Yep. Um, for, for doing crazy things, like driving in the wrong side of the road. Yeah, it, it's really like they took the point for system. For nearly getting hit by a car, but managing to duck out of the way in time? Yeah, it reminds me of the point system from the Burnout series. There's <laughs> also, I don't remember if these are missions or other game modes, the ones where you, like, try and jump in front of cars to get hit in order to get insurance money. Mm-hmm. And in those, you are completely invincible. So you can do you can do the most ridiculous things, such as jumping out of helicopters from the height ceiling, which is actually a pretty good strategy for beating those side missions. Yeah. Um, well, one of the really cool compliments I have to give the game, at one point I was sitting uh, playing the game and my girlfriend was in the room, and she was like, jump off the penthouse. I'm like, what? I hadn't even thought to do that. I'm just like... I just saved. Okay, I'll do it. So I leap off the side of this building, and it's like, press A to open parachute. And the moment I hit it, a mini game started up where it's like, now land inside of these road flares for a base jumping uh, mini game. Just like, really? The game was prepared for me getting the odd urge that I want to jump off of a building and was like, even ready to go with a mini game for if I should happen to want to do this? Like, really, this is the definition of a great sandbox. Whatever you want to do, the creators are like, sure, we'll give you some kind of achievement for that. If nothing else, we'll give you some reputation. If you hijack a taxi, you can do side missions where you drive criminals and or wounded people around in your taxi. If you yep. hijack or if you hijack a ambulance, you can do ambulance things, there's taxi things. There's base jumping things, there's marksman things. There's Dr. Genki. This, there's so much in this game. And it, uh, the moment you get bored with it, you can go do something else. It's... I, I definitely... It's, it's, as soon as I got done playing that diving out of a plane mission, the, the second mission, it was like, add to Steam wish list. <laughs> so, so that's Saints Row 3. We, we haven't played enough to give it a full review, but, but we can we definitely say so that far. we recommend it. Yeah, what we've seen so far 
it's it's something that you really ought to look at yourself to determine if it's for you. Pick yeah. up a rental copy. Or if, something. If, if you were one of those people who got ten hours into Grand Theft Auto and was like, "No, I just can't play anymore. I want to go do something wall. else." Yeah, this this I didn't really hit hit like that wall of man. I I kind of want to see what happens after this, but I don't want to slog through to get there. Yeah, the, none of this feels like work. The moment I got tired of the main story, it was like, huh, there's like two dozen things I could do. I could go on the the assassination missions. I could go do on the car theft missions. I could go just randomly take out enemy gang members in certain locations to claim part of the, uh, the territory. Or I could just go buy buildings, because every hour, as long as you have taken over part of the city and have some properties, you'll just get money. And it's think- like, here's a couple thousand bucks. Another thing I'd like to say is that the game is really good at making you feel really cool because Mm -hmm. um, one thing Sin said earlier that Johnny Gat was the boss, actually the player character is the big boss in charge of everything always. As soon as Johnny dies. No. (laughs) You're you're always the boss. Johnny's just the cool guy. Yeah. Johnny's the cool guy. That's why he has the movie deal. Yeah. And so you're... Perhaps they didn't explain that well enough, but... Yeah, All no, the you, boots you on are the, the boss. And you are conquering the city single-handedly, and you're like, he I, seemed to be giving me a lot personally, of the the am so cool. That that was a tutorial. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's our review, well, mini-review, of uh, Saints Row the Third. I guess we should move on to other things, because we've got a really full show tonight. Cram the content in there! More show! Like a turducken. All right, this, is, so this is the turducken of nerd talk shows. Last chance chat. If you've got any questions regarding our play of Saints Row 3, now would be the time to ask them. Otherwise, we're going to move on to Star Wars The Old Republic, She's which really hasn't come out yet and won't one. until December 20th. But we, all three of us, uh, got into last week's uh, testing weekend. Yep. You guys, because you pre-ordered and me because I happen to be a member of a gaming site that was giving out free passes... But we did get in earlier than you, so... This weekend was fairly packed. There were a lot of people who got in, so... if you Yeah, I also noticed neighbor. how many instances on the server that I was playing on there were. Um, so when I started out, I, uh, I got in later than everyone else. I got in on Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. Or as we did gotten in on Friday. But jumping on the Empire side of things... There were 147 different instances of the Empire starting area active. On your particular server? Just on that one server, which was a medium population server when I jumped on it. Most of ours were like heavy population that we had gotten on later. But the first yeah. time I logged into the Old Republic, which was the day it opened Friday, every single server was full. So, do you mean actually full? Because they were having a mistake. Every single server was full full to a wait queue. Okay. Yep. Can't say I'm surprised there. So, uh, yeah. It's a pretty big game to download. Just just saying. There there were a lot of parts. But, that said, it was really impressive uh, graphically from what I saw. Like, as far as... We're not talking next-gen, high-end console game. This is an MMO. <laughs> also, there's a, there's an aesthetic where it's like only kind of realistic. Like the the the, the environments are kind of realistic. I, but again, the character I, models themselves are kind of cartoon. I, I was comparing it to rock band characters with this as well. They they are they're style they're definitely stylized. Um, but that said, when you start, those I don't of think you it's been, a bad thing. those of you who've been following the website, you already know there are four classes on each side. Uh, on the Empire side, we've got Sith Warrior, Sith Inquisitor, uh, Bounty Hunter, and, and the, eight, the, the Mercenary. Eight. And oh, those yeah. are mirrored it's the mercenary. pretty closely on the Bounty Republic Hunter. side. Bounty Hunter, it's called officially. Okay, Bounty Hunter and then the Imperial Agent. Can we not argue with me about this? I'm only, you know, she, she's got this covered. It's done. And on the Republic side, we have the Jedi Knight. The Jedi Consular. The Soldier. Uh, the, the Republic be the Trooper. Commando. commando. Yeah, trooper, trooper it is. And the and Smuggler. The yeah. And each of these classes has its own unique starting area, of which we played, let's see, I did well, they three usually, characters. They pair them off. 
the, the two of the classes will start on the same planet. Yeah, but they'll have their own separate areas for things. Well, you at get the bran- very, very beginning, maybe. Yeah, you get but. branched off into story areas, which I thought was kind of cool. So, eventually, while you're running around your environments, you'll find these, like, green corridors that you'll run through, and those will be your story area. While you're in those, you're in your own private instance that has no load screen whatsoever when you go into it. You're the only one who can affect what's in that area, and if you end up in a conversation, you're the only one who gets to make choices. Although, there's never a situation where anybody else who's not in your party is making choices in a conversation. That's yeah, not like strangers to... can ruin your conversations. Don't be afraid Unless of Unless your group partied with strangers. But if it's your story area, you're the only one who gets to talk. And this is a unique thing to make you feel special while you're getting your cutscenes. And it's kind of great. There are lots of cutscenes in this game. It's actually really clear from playing this that what we have here, instead of an MMO that happens to be skinned with a Bioware game, this is a Bioware game that happens to be an MMO. There is at least as much talking as there is stabbing, which I approve of. I think that's really fantastic. I happen to really love cutscenes, so... Of course, I, I I, I, I kind of grew up... If my background in gaming is that cutscenes were your reward for getting to that point. And it feels like that again. Yeah. This game feels like, woo, you finished that quest. Here's the cool cutscene to finish the quest. Mm-hmm. If you finish like an average quest in the game, like a, even a fetch quest, you get a cutscene where you are told about your reward and given your next task. Hey guys, no quest text. You yeah. don't have to read anything. Everything in the game is voice acted, and voice acted really well. Everything is fully voice acted and done marvelously. Mm-hmm. Like, playing as my I Sith was... character, uh, I ended up actually role-playing a the character. The alien characters, not so much the ones that aren't speaking basic yeah, English. Did, I, on that note, before we continue, I noticed that the... Uh, the Twi'lek language is very efficient for saying things. And in fact, I had a couple friends commenting on that too, that like the Twi'lek would say two sentences worth of dialogue and manage to spout out a paragraph. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that's an efficient language. They even have a word for that one guy's name. Yeah, it's... it's, So that's got its flaws, but... But that's really minor. That's extremely minor. So... Starting off with my Sith warrior, um, you end up on Korriban going to the Sith Academy. You've been fast-forwarded through the Sith training by a couple years, and for that, everyone is totally jealous of you. Um, and, and right from the start, I ended up creating a character who was not evil, but was the very honor-bound warrior who felt that you know strength is the most important thing and being mighty is what matters in the universe. Who was also kind of a flirt. And By I just of you mean you I just, flirted with everyone where the opportunity presented itself. No, because there was one situation where I decided that this was in poor taste, and we'll get to that later. But like this was the first time in the MMO that I actually felt like I was role-playing a character, that it just wasn't a tune that I was grinding up stats on. Mm-hmm. And that was really cool. I liked being able to have this character who didn't always do the evil thing because he actually cared about honor and what was right. He just happened to be a member of the Sith Empire. Um, I actually spent a whole lot of time on the Republic side, playing both my Jedi Consular and a Smuggler. So let's go into your Smuggler experiences. That was very different because the Smuggler is a cover-based shooting class. So this being an MMO, it becomes a little difficult to find cover, right? No. Everywhere where I could have possibly run into a hostile, there was at least one or two points where I could take cover from. And it's basically context sensitive in that, like, basically the best way to go about this is you hover, like, you you hover over, you, like, select a hostile target, and the little green silhouette of your character up against a cover would show up, and you could move your vision around, move the camera around it, it will show different places where you could take cover, and then you push a button, like, either, I think, two or... Or whatever you set it as. There are two different buttons, 2 or F, that you could use um, to then spring to that point in cover. And in fact, there are certain abilities on the smuggler that you could only use from behind cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the same with the uh, Imperial Agent. 
because those are the counter classes. Um, the Imperial Agent needs to find cover to use, like, their remote bomb uh, and use their headshot ability. And so that was very weird. It took some, it took some getting used to, but after a while it was kind of fun because you yeah. got, like, a little bit of impunity there. It, it's very, cover. very different from playing the, the lightsaber-wielding classes mm -hmm. who are very upfront and... and out in the world and just damaging things with lightsabers, cutting but them off. But chucking thermal grenades out for, from uh, out from behind a cover, and you know, l letting my piece of cover absorb most of the most of the shots that were coming at me. That was that was kind of satisfying, actually, and I felt really cool doing it. Yeah, it, I have to compliment Bioware that playing the non lightsaber wielding classes in this game is actually a lot of fun. It's because at first I was like, well, duh, why would you want to be anything other than a Jedi slash Sith? But I, I gave it a try, and I'm glad I did, because I ended up spending six hours on that character. Yeah, no, I actually really liked my Imperial Agent <clears throat> when I tried her out. I thought she was cool. Her storyline was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, she was infiltrating the huts on Hutta mm -hmm. and trying right. to wor work her way into their criminal organization so that they would support the Empire. It was very cool. Uh, my smuggler actually started out that canonically she had had a ship and she had just docked, made the smuggling run, docked, showed up, uh, gotten betrayed by the person she was making the trade off with, who stole her ship and the things that needed to be smuggled. Mm -hmm. And so, in order to avoid the wrath of this like criminal overlord, you had to go get it back. Yeah. So that you could deliver the goods and get your ship back. Didn't want to be frozen in carbonite, huh? And so that 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 was you know that was really neat because this part of the, part of the charm of the game is that you get to have a ship and so this was neat that it wasn't just something that I had to work up towards this was something that I had and was a constant motivator through the course of this playthrough was that I need my freaking ship back. Yeah, my uh, Sith warrior's motivation was I want to become the top student to become a Sith and I don't want to die. Mm. Pretty pretty basic if you've ever played one of the other Old Republic games, the the Knights nice. series, you, you're you familiar with the Sith Academy and what it's like there, lots of backstabbing, but like, rising to be the top dog there actually felt like a really cool story. Mm -hmm. You got to meet a lot of weird Sith Lords, each who had their own agendas. Um, every class eventually does get a companion character that will join them. Usually, usually around at, level 9 or 10. Yep. And likewise, that's when the force-wielding characters get their lightsabers, also. And at level 10 is when you pick your class spec, like that, the, which tree, your, which, like, talent tree you're going to, like... To determine which of the well, there are classes you finish only the really as. four primary classes to speak of, because the Republic and in Imperial versions of the classes are the same as each other. There's... Yep. More like eight, because each class forks into two prestige classes at level ten that have different raid roles. Like, they'll even straight up tell you when you're selecting your advanced class whether they're tank or DPS or healers. Like, like um, like when I had gotten my Jedi Consular to level ten, I could either pick the Jedi Sage or the Jedi Shadow. The Sage is a healing and DPS, arguably. Class. Every class is DPS. Yeah, every class can do some damage, but... And so that was a primarily healing class. Whereas, if I had just taken the other fork, I could be a tank. That's kind of interesting. The guardian... Be or the, the, the counselor the, becomes a tank. The Jedi shadow. That's kind of cool. Um, likewise, the Sith warrior can either go the route of the juggernaut or the marauder. Choosing your advanced class opens up your talent trees, which work just like talent trees in WoW. You get points when you level and you spend them on boons. And you can respec yeah, your talents in the same way the same you could in WoW, which is you pay money similar. and you pay progressively more money yeah. every time you want to respec. But you cannot change which advanced class you chose. So at level 10, you're basically being stuck Just, with that sort fort of character. And yeah. so you're kind of deciding how you want to play what your playstyle is going to be for the rest of the game. The neat thing about that is um, the story only applies to the main class. 
And so if you just want to play through like each of the different classes story arcs, you basically got three chapters and a prologue and then three chapters in your personal story arc. But each one of those is rather long. Um, the yes, prologue itself is two whole planets. Yes. Um, and the and the cool thing about that is they, they've only specified the story arc to be for that class, and so you don't have to be locked into a certain play style in order to experience that story. Mm -hmm. And so if you decide, well, I'm better at DPS or I'm better at tanking or whatever, that, that, that won't affect your story. You can play it how you want to and still get that experience. Yep. Um, I mentioned each class has a companion. Uh, that's given to you in the story, and each time you get the same companion. If you're playing as the same class, you'll get the exact same companion. Likewise, you'll get the same starship with each character. Uh, so, for instance, my Sith Warrior, when he hit level 9, was given a Twi'lek slave named Vet, who is a DPS uh, shooting character. And they tend to partner your... you're going to gather more companions as you go on in the game. But your first companion is really built to complement you, you, uh, what your class can do. Yeah. And so, it, since, say I'm playing the smuggler, they gave me, which, you know, is meant to sit behind cover and shoot at things, they gave me a tank. In the form of a Wookiee? No. No? Human. Oh, that's right, you got the, of course the human so. one. Yep. And... You had dreadlocks. Which I really, really hated. <laughs> so I gave him an alternate skin as soon as I could. Yeah, and I think it's cool that you have your companion characters for if you just can't do a quest on your own and you, or you need an extra person and only have three with you. You can go, well, we've got three characters who are DPS. Let's take someone's tank uh, companion, mm -hmm. and they'll fill the fourth slot. It's kind of awesome. And you kind of direct them like a pet in World of Warcraft, only without all the, you know, douchiness of being a hunter. <laughs> or a warlock. Because those happen. The game is largely designed not to be played alone. There's lots of quests that will require two or more people, and the companions are largely sort of a way that you can get away with the multiplayer quests, even if you don't have real life friends. <laughs> yeah, it keeps saying that your smuggling buddy is the Wookiee. Bodar. Yeah, no, I was given... A, might he be a temporary companion, but... Maybe. Maybe the Wookiee just wasn't added yet. There are... You do accrue multiple companions, so it's potential... It could potentially become a permanent companion eventually. Mm-hmm. Alignment system. There are light side and dark side points, but actually they take a page out of the Mass Effect book, and you accrue both light side and dark side points independently. You have an overall alignment score, but you you have your separate light side and dark side scores as well. So say you have like 150 light side points and maybe 50 dark side points or something. And, and those you, are put, in se put into separate pools. This could potentially, uh, there are special items that you can use depending on your alignment. And if you have done enough, you can potentially use the dark side and the light side items right next to each other. Cool. So, overall play experiences, we're looking forward to the next incoming... Uh, Absolutely! Yeah. I'm like, I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. <laughs> I'm pretty sad that I spent... 20 hours over the course of four days playing this character, and then my character is deleted. I'm like, oh. I, I don't think I'm going to go back to either of the classes I played during the testing, because I, I kind of don't want to slog through their starting areas again. That said, there's still two other classes for me to play, so... I think what we were trying to do is trying to get everybody to... get everybody we were playing with to pair off with those, like, two Force users together or two shooty classes together just so that those two people could, like, play together during those starting areas. And that won't be a big issue once the game actually comes out. It's just we were trying to slog through an experience as much as possible within the limited time that we had. Yeah, I don't know. I, I purposely picked uh, the Sith Marauder, which is the, the DPS class, so that when the game fully comes out and I'm ready to group in this to be my permanent character, I'll pick the, the Juggernaut so that I have a tank instead. Mm -hmm. And the experiences of the two are different for a lot well, of ways. Well, the story isn't. Well, the story isn't, but then again, I also stopped 
at the second world for the story. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more than happy to go through Korriban again. That, that was fun, and I even picked some options that I wouldn't normally pick, just knowing that, yeah, this character isn't going to stick around. Mm -hmm. Now, I, f I think the, the affection system with your companions is cool. I'm kind of uh, interested in the, if you get your affection rating low enough with your companion, will they just leave? I don't know, because it started out that I was just getting minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one with Kaiser. It's basically, they're kind of standing around as you're, like, doing all these interactions with other characters, and you can basically earn their approval or disapproval yeah, it's, based it's on the whether same or not way as their philosophy any. agrees with you, the decisions that you are making. It's the same way as in KOTOR. And so, well, KOTOR 2 did this with the influence system yeah. more. Mm -hmm. um, because really, you could be dark side, dark side, dark side all day, and Karth would just kind of whine at you that maybe you should stop doing that, please. Yeah, no. Um, Vet really liked my decisions, as long as I wasn't kissing the Sith Lord's butts or being overly mean. And if you can look at, at their codex entries under, like, the important people or whatever, yeah, it'll, it'll tell you what they like. And, dislikes. Um, and so basically, because um, Kaizen, the, um, the, the Trandoshan... Uh, companion that I had on my consular character because I was taking the light side options and like sparing people's lives where I could. Which is weird because you'd think they'd want to give you a companion that would approve of how a Jedi would act. T seven. Oh, so if you're a Jedi Knight, you get a companion. Yeah, I suppose that really noble. That wouldn't approve of most like uh, stereotypical Sith actions. But that's, I think, why she liked my character. I mean, the very first thing I did to get affection points with the character was, yeah, here's the taser slave collar control that I've got for you. Well, I, I don't need this. To torture them gains affection with pretty much anybody. I don't I know mean, anybody Zapper who wants. approves of continuing I'll, to leave the torture the fu device. The funniest thing was, while I had this device, every single, like choice option that I had relating to her, the last option was always shock vet. That was like the bottom option on every single one of these menus. It's actually really hard playing through as a Jedi Inquisitor because basically they've decided, well, how often is the like Force Lightning thing going to come up in conversation? And it turns out a lot. And so that thing is always tempting you there with the potential that you could just shock whoever you were talking to. <laughs> Yeah, no, with, I only had that option while I had Vet because I had a button that would electrocute And yeah, that was her. only for one specific person. This is basically everyone you could be talking to. Mm -hmm. Except for people who are more powerful than you, because yes. you're not you dumb You could shock them, but then they would masters. kill you. Well, it would lead to a very, very short MMO if that were the case. I think that'd be awesome. If, if you could just get a non-standard game over, you could be like, no, force lightning on my master. And then your master's like, no, and then it kills you, and then it deletes your character. Oh, it's like playing hardcore mode. But, yeah, so it's, it's been interesting. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it now. I know I was skeptical going into it because I was like, another MMO? Why? But we basically played three MMOs within the last, like, year. Yeah, but after seeing the amount of story that Bioware has put into this game... I'm more excited about the story aspects than I am about the MMO. This is the part where Pyrosim and I laugh and go, ha ha, I told you so. No, it's totally cool. I I did not think, I, nor have I ever seen before, an MMO that put this much individual story into a character. As a general that, rule, I don't like MMOs at all. So I'm pretty much into this just for the dialogue trees. And I think that's enough. I, I, I am playing the MMO despite the MMO. For the dialogue trees. I, I have enjoyed the crap out of this. <laughs> yeah. The the dialogue is all very well written. I, lo I liked playing MMOs, but I liked playing them by myself because I'm afraid of other people. Yeah. So, I, I guess so I... This is, this is like, this is a perfect game. It's like they made this just for me. <laughs> I guess I should go ahead and say where, where dialogue trees can go wrong, that, that story I hinted at earlier. So, my character I was playing was a flirt. Like, every time he got the flirt option as a Sith, I went with it. Because, hey, you're Sith. What do you care? Like, I tried the same thing as my Jedi Knight, and it just didn't work, because it never gave me the options, because I was supposed to be all, like, prim and high and Jedi-like. But my Sith got the option to flirt every time he met a female character, and it was hilarious. Until I ran into this, like, 
the Sith guard who was standing outside of the final crypt on Korriban, who was like, Excuse me, sir. I need help finding my friend's dead body. He was a, a brave acolyte who just wanted to be a Sith so bad, but I heard his final screams while he was in the crypt. And this whole time I'm talking to her, I'm using the flirt option. He's like, hey, you pretty lady. I didn't know that we had pretty female guards. And then she's telling me this, like, monstrously horrible story about listening to her friend dying. And I'm like, it's still giving me flirt options. <laughs> Why is it still giving me flirt options? Because you're a terrible person. <laughs> Why would you be hitting on someone while they tell you this horrible, sad story? I, I, I like that because... I it, mean, it's like listening to a woman go, My dog just died. And your response would be... You can stop crying them pretty eyes. Want oh. dinner? Let's go for dinner. No, because basically you could tell that she had some sort of like possibly romantic attachment to the yeah. person who is dead. So, <laughs> he's, so he's dead, dead right? Like, so, so that leaves some room for me. <laughs> if I go, basically how that works. If I go fetch his corpse, can we go out on a date? Does this count as a three-way if I also let him touch your boob? <laughs> Look, the body can sit in the corner. It's perfectly fine. Doesn't don't mind if he watches. Wow. <laughs> and we just the, jumped the, the line at the wrong level. Nothing. <laughs> but yeah, she's begging me to go retrieve this guy's body to give to his father. And it's still giving me flirt options. So, way to go, Bioware. Way to make it awkward. <laughs> I'm glad that those options are there, be. because, I mean, yeah, role-playing me isn't role-playing if you only have one set of tracks you can go on. And it's if you can't the become fact extremely that there are wrong options there moments. makes your decisions matter. So he, he was doing flirt, 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 and then he stopped dead in his tracks and went, whoa! And just that went, she, the line that she just gave me was, I heard his screams from deep inside the tomb, and I'm not brave enough to go retrieve the body myself. And then it gave me the dialogue tree of, Yes, do it. What's in it for me? Or continue to flirt. Yeah. So I think one other thing that we ought to touch upon, since we're talking about these dialogue trees, is the multiplayer conversation. Which I didn't thing. get to try on my Sith character because, well, that's the one I played by myself. But yeah, we did do this on our Jedi character, or on our Republic characters. So go ahead. Um, there's not much to tell about it, really, just from that cold open. If you're sometimes while you're on quests with people or whatever, or particularly in flashpoints, which are the, the, their ideas of dungeons, yep. um, you, you could have the option to. Uh, a few of you can participate in a conversation with an NPC as a party. And if you all don't happen to be right next to the NPC, the game lets you do a video call where your character appears in as a hologram in hologram form and will participate in the conversation that way. Sometimes that doesn't let you, like, always make, like, dialogue contributions, though, and that might just be a bug. Yeah. So, while this is going on, it'll come up with the dialogue tree option, and then your characters will each get to click, and it will do a random dice roll for your characters. To see who actually gets to say the line. However, if, say, um, you decide to deliver a dark side option, and Pyro and I both wanted to go with a light side option, we'll still get our light side points, and you'll still get your dark side points, despite the fact that it was you who won the roll. Yep. Um, so other people's choices will only affect the story that you get. And not your personal alignment. Um, it's very interesting. There's also a time limit, so you can't just sit there hemming and hawing over what decision you want to make as far as a conversation option. Like, there's a little circle, and as it fills up, that's how much time that you have going away. It's and roughly uh, 25 seconds. And so you got to pick something. Once you pick something, you can't unpick it, mm -hmm. which is kind of, yeah. But um, the, in, in, the, in that sense, you, uh, you, you each get to, get to pick your dialogue option, and then it, it, then it delivers that way. The game also rewards the player who wins with social points. You get, everybody gets social points. The people who didn't win get less. Yeah. But, you, you, yeah, it's like four if you win and two if you lost the roll. And then you'll, you'll rank up your social abilities and be able to acquire unique items for that. Basically, it's, hey, you grouped a lot and you did a lot of quests this way. Here's some special items for you. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, get a character tar you can get a character targeter that will mark out uh, enemies when you're in a group. So, like, the lead person wants to mark a target for the group to DPS down. 
you can get that item at uh, social level one. Okay. Pyro, you were saying? One thing that's notable about the dialogue trees is that for pretty much every conversation we encountered, the same options were available to everybody. So that yeah. if, if I didn't win the dice roll to say my line, and then I heard Pixie say her line, I'd, I would know which number she chose out of the options. And I don't know if later there are going to be different options that will be available depending on how your character class. is aligned or what their or. intelligence is or anything. Or and class, but yeah. I, I think that would be nice because it seems a little formulaic when I know that there were only three things anybody could say. Yeah. Just having unique actions based on a certain person's uh, character class would be kind of cool. At the same or time, race options. it was kind of funny to backtrack between what the long-winded dialogue was and guess what the option on the dialogue wheel is. Because on the yeah. dialogue wheel, it'll say just like a one, two-word summary of what you intend, and then for real, it will say a couple sentences. And, and in truth, we've had the same problem that we had with our L.A. Noir review, where sometimes what actually comes up isn't what you thought it meant. That happened to me escape. pretty severely at the end of my Jedi Knight run, where I, w I was trying to just be a nice guy and not kill the villain, but it so happened that I wound up doing very evil things and then memory wiping my companion. <laughs> No, Do we want to tell that story? I, I didn't quite intend that. All right, but. hold on. We have a question in chat regarding the game. If two people choose the same option and one of these people uh, was randomly selected to say it, does the other person get the full points as well as if they uh, because they selected the same option? Uh, no, only the person who wins the dice roll gets the full points, not, regardless not of social what points. points. But for everything else, they get all of the credit for their choice, no matter who won. Yeah, social points are only for the person who rolls highest on the dice roll. Which don't really matter much. Like I said, they're just an no, extra they're bonuses. Thing. There is an extra skill that you can level up in order to get some other items or perks that aren't necessary for the base game. And I didn't find that anyone was getting their line said like sufficiently more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a... Although I would like to know what the scale is for those rolls, because there were times where I was rolling 103 yeah. or 3. I rolled 250 once, and I was like, what? Yeah. I think I there's th specifically a weight added, a number added on, based on how long it's been since your character got to be the lead. So I, I think that's definitely. But it is pretty a thing balanced, right? Yeah, there was no point where it's like, well, I spoke four times in a row, and Pyro hasn't said anything in three discussions. It, it yeah, it usually cycles pretty well. Mm -hmm. To be like, it's your turn, and now it's your turn. Yeah, I can only think of like maybe one occasion where I spoke twice in a row. That said, it isn't a direct cycle where it's you, then me, then him, then you. Yeah, but. It, it seems to be pretty even. And, and another thing that should be noted is that when it's your story conversations, when you are in one of your story instances, you're the only one who gets to talk. And then the other person in your party goes into what's known as spectator mode, where they can still watch the cutscenes and so get the benefit of the story that way, mm -hmm. but they can't affect anything. So They're really, just there to help you. In spectator mode, you can fight in combat, but you turn into a ghost for cutscenes. Yes. Yeah. But if you want to see multiple people's stories at once, or if you're doing, like, a role-playing group, where instead of just role-playing one character, your group is role-playing the experience of these characters, you can see more than one storyline. Mm. Or if you're just curious about, hey, well, why are we here helping you do this? Yeah, or you can you see the, the end results of their quests. Or if you just want to have something to do instead of cooling your heels outside the instance portal, you know, twiddling your thumbs. Yeah. That's that's actually really awesome. That if I'm if I'm in the middle of downtime because the person I'm playing with is doing their story quests, I can watch them. I can just follow the person around and watch what they're doing. So yeah. instead of just standing there while they go cutscene and then stare off into space for five minutes or so. At the very beginning, that was kind of difficult because you can't do a spectator mode on things like uh, my my my. My, my Jedi Consular had a whole bunch of quests at the beginning where she had to, like, examine items or read, like, uh, ancient, like, holochrome text things. You, you don't get any spectator mode for conversations that take place outside of instances. 
Yes. So, and, so a conversation that I'm having, well, it's not really a conversation, but it's me inspecting an object or something. Yeah, she was watching a cutscene on a little hollow projector, and meanwhile, my character was awkwardly dancing behind her, um, which she couldn't see because she was in this cutscene. But when I got out, oh boy. And so I unplugged my headphones and let him listen to, like, the dialogue of, like, these ancient Jedi masters lecturing me on what it means to be a Jedi. And meanwhile, there's a Jedi guardian just, like, or dancing behind her. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's best stupid. Jedi ever. No. It's I've, very stupid. I've only seen one dance in the entire game. And I think and I've seen it of, across all Force users, Sith and Republic. And it There's is, actually a couple. Uh, okay. The slash dance is the basic form of dance. It's the one you've probably seen a lot. There's also the club dance, which is effectively the the female Twelix uh, dance, and which is the dance from Party Rock Anthem. Yep. Which I don't think you've seen, but nope. So yeah, um, Old Republic. It's looking very positive so far. I'm definitely looking I'm forward so to it. I'm so stoked. I'm like, man, this collector's edition was a good buy, particularly so, since I'm not buying it. I guess we can go on to our most recent League of Legends news. I have a few more things to say about the Old Republic. One of go which is that there's no integrated voice chat, which doesn't really matter for us because we have our own voice chat system. But it is a little like disappointing one. because if you're looking for group and you hook up with strangers to do the many, many multi-person dungeons that are around the game, then you're pretty much stuck with text chat and that doesn't work at all during combat. Well, I think it's they don't want you guys talking over their cutscenes, is what it is. How dare you interrupt those cutscenes? That might be Which, one thing, but I mean, cutscenes are only part of the time. And there's that's... lots of coordination that needs to happen during combat. It'd but like, clearly, really I feel me. like. I feel like integrating voice chat is an unnecessary step because there are so many programs that you can use to communicate online. The problem is, though, that I was having a whole lot of trouble with um, alt-tabbing out into a different program, and I couldn't get Steam to run within this client either. Yeah. And so I couldn't use my Shift-Tab in order to do, like, use a Steam chat, either text or voice-based. And if I wanted to alt-tab in order to mess with one of my other programs, then I was kind of screwed doing that too because if you alt if you alt if you leave that game window for any reason and co try to come back, well, one it won't let you shift tab to bring up Steam at all, even though I added a shortcut and was and launched the launcher from within there, mm -hmm. um, which sucks because I can do it within League of Legends and that has a different launcher too. There's probably um, a reason for that, and it's called EA. Um, but. What was I saying? Right, so it sucks that I can't do that at all, but if I just alt-tab to do any other program or whatever, and then come back to that window, you are in texture pop in hell. As the entire game environment rebuilds itself. Uh, so you, st you come back, it is black. You can see nothing. And then you can see gray outlines of, like, trees and stuff. And everything's blocky. And then slowly all the colors and the textures have to load back in, basically what looks like one at a time. I don't know, I thought it was really cool to see the world rebuilding itself. This, that wasn't really cool, that was a waste of my time, it hurt my eyes. I thought it was neat. Was it, yeah, it is I, maybe I just, neat the first time, but when you just want to send a message in chat and then come back and keep playing, you're like, well now I have to sit here for five minutes. And we, we did end up having to sit here. I had to mess with, like, a setting on my microphone or something, and then I had to come back. And I'm like, well, we got to sit here for a while now because I can't see in order to go anywhere. Really? Because whenever, when I tabbed out and tabbed back in, it took no longer than 15 seconds to rebuild you, everything well, on I'd my I'd say computer. that took maybe two minutes. What do you think, Pyro? For yeah, me, it, that it, one it time? lasted a long time for me. Like, when, wow, when a minute I and a half. See. So I guess that depends on what you're playing it on and what your settings are at. But the, the other thing is that you are correct... But I'm correct. running a very powerful gaming device. You are correct, Sen, when you say that any integrated voice chat would not be nearly as good as Mumble or Ventrilo or TeamSpeak. And that yeah. is true in WoW and StarCraft II and every other game that has integrated voice chat. But the trick is, if you're just hooking up with a stranger for one dungeon, you don't want to have to tell them to download and install Mumble or Ventrilo. You just want yeah. to press a key on your keyboard, and it's already and all be able set to up. Talk to them. Yeah. 
still. I'm very leery of integrated voice chat in, well, most games. Hence why I don't play anything online using my Xbox, because of, well, the people who have the microphone. Uh, yes, but it, the, the, nobody's going to turn on voice chat on you without your consent. We're talking about, I would like to voice chat with this person, and can't. That is a thing I cannot turn on of my own volition. Yeah. And just to round this out, because I'd say that StarCraft Two and World of Warcraft have integrated voice chat. Yes. And it's never and in your way when know. you don't want it, but it is there if you do want it. Yeah, to be honest, I don't think I've ever used... In, in my five years of playing WoW, I never used the integrated voice chat once. The two of us have. All right, then. Um, and it wasn't exactly great. It's it not nearly as options. good as a more sophisticated solution, like the one we're but, using to do this podcast. But mm. it works, and it's convenient. All right. times when you're doing that. And... It, it kind of sucks that you can't do that, because if I'm, like, if I'm in deep trouble, like, I've got, like, five mobs on me or something, and I need I, I need a, a quick heal, or I need the tank to pull some aggro off me or something, for some reason, I need immediate assistance, it will take much more time to try and somehow not only keep myself alive, but also type in chat that I need assistance and hope someone reads it. Then it, that, that is a lot more difficult than it would be to just, you know, talk into the mic and say, hey, I, I need some help over here. Could you please help me? The other thing I wanted to say about the older public urgency. is that we will totally have a guild. And if you want to hang out with us, you can probably join our guild after it comes out. We'll have to pick a server and whatnot for that. And but. aside for that point. Yep. We will make more information available to you as the game as comes we out. Go. So, yeah. All right. On to league news for the week. Sure. So, the most recent patch came out this Tuesday, as we can follow. And they've got patch notes on the site, which I will briefly go over the most important ones. So, the, the most notable change to League of Legends today would probably be the addition of Volibear. Bear. Really? You're not going to talk about jungling as the biggest change? No, because the one they've got posted all over the main page of their site in, like, big, bold text and a giant picture is they've added another bear. Like they do. Because bears are important in League of Legends. But this one's a lightning bear. Yeah, and pretty soon we're having an ice bear and a poison bear and a psychic bear. And Did, did they actually say that, or are you just making this I'm up? I'm just making that up. Completely. Okay, because I was about to be really concerned. I'm, I'm just thinking that League of Legends has a massive obsession with bears. They have two, and one of them's not even a standalone character. They have three, because there's that other skin for Udyr. That's a skin, which means it's not actually required to go on it. Lots of bears. I'd like to mention earlier when we were playing League of Legends, Sen said, well, if these bears keep killing me, I'm going to start being afraid of bears. And Pixie and I simultaneously were like, you weren't already afraid of bears? What's wrong with I'm you? More, I'm more afraid of them when they have fire powers and lightning powers. Don't you visit should still Yellowstone be afraid of bears. The Yellowstone Park bears have fire powers? Yes, yes they do. And they no. race on. And they have all of the items. They're level Look, 30. I'm already, I'm already afraid enough when Annie drops a uh, flaming stun bear on my head. Now I have a lightning bear that's going to run at me faster than he normally should. It looks a lot like Yorick, if anybody's ever read the His Dark Materials trilogy. Yeah, it, it's definitely based on one of those. Although those were ice bears, weren't they? They were polar bears who okay. happened to wear armor. Well, this is also a polar bear who happens to wear armor, but that armor generates lightning. Also, this bear looks like he's in need of a haircut. Yeah. So, uh, he's a tank character who can do insane amounts of DPS using his flurry skill. I did, in fact, watch Vayne explode uh, from half health to one hit from this guy. At level 6. Admitted, Vayne has nothing for health, but she shouldn't die that quickly. And he, his signature move, and this is the thing he's going to be known and hated for, is his Q, where he charges forward on all fours at increased speed, even faster if he's targeting a champion, and the first enemy he hits while in this form gets flung up in the air and lands behind him. So, he's now put you at far greater risk. He's pretty much another version of Singed. Except instead of stupid poisons, this one does large amounts of direct damage. 
I'm very afraid of this character. All right, then. I, I'm already anticipating a week one nerf on him, just like Graves. Poor Graves. Didn't see it coming. Uh, the other notable changes that we've had is the jungle has been overhauled to make it easier for people going into it, which in tune, from what I've seen, has only made the jungle easier for those people who know how to do it. It's supposed to encourage more people to get in the jungle. No, but, but, but all we've done so far is made it super easy for those people who already know how to do it. Cornell, like, this is the best thing ever, and so easy, and I can gank you at level 4. Because now, the jungle mobs are not only easier, they have lower scaling XP and gold. Um, the red buff has been nerfed, since you can get it easier now, it won't be pretty much like a death sentence if someone hits you with it at low level. Mm -hmm. They've also made it so that um, the jungle mobs heal you when you clear the camp. And they'll heal you for a certain percentage based on how much of your health is missing. So that you won't have to just clear one camp, jump back to your base, and then go clear another camp. Pretty much it's expected that an average level jungler, someone who has a little bit of skill but not a ton, will be able to just clear the entire jungle on their side of the board before even having to think about going back. And they'll probably have enough HP to be able to go do a gank before going back. On top of that, I'm the really camps afraid of uh, junglers now. So there's more camps to kill. It, it has become so unbelievably easy, and we'll see if Riot keeps it the way it is or maybe tweaks it up a little bit like I'm thinking they should. Jungling should be doable, but it shouldn't be an auto strategy. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be something that happens every game. It should happen in a game if the person is comfortable with it and thinks they know how to do it. It it's just how do you learn how to do it if you've never done it? You practice it and you get better at it on the bots. Just like everything else in League of Legends. Yeah, how do you learn how to you practice it if you and then you can do it? Know how to do it already. But see if they don't if they don't make it accessible to people, then they're not going to try it. That's the thing. I, I think they've made it to the point where the pros can just always do it from now on, without even thinking or needing to take any kind of risk whatsoever in doing it. Because even really good players who would go into the jungle uh, the thing would occasionally that, die. The, this isn't going after the pros, this is going after, is, this is targeting those new people. Yeah, it, it, it has been changed so that your basic new player could jungle on the right character. And and that's what I think and is the problem. Still never done it. So we'll see what Riot does regarding that. Um, also in the patch, and this is at least a big deal to you, Sivir. The, the boomerang-throwing Amazon character got a major buff. By that, I think he means she is a lady warrior and not that she only has one boob. Right. She reminds me a lot of the Amazon character from Diablo. Anyway. So, I've been playing a Sivir lately, and until today's patch, she had been pretty weak sauce. She was actually the weakest of the... Uh, the mid-ranged carry characters. By that meaning that she's supposed to be spectacular and just needs a bit of help to get there. Mm -hmm. But now that she's been changed around, I don't know, I, I like that Riot does this. I like that Riot will go back and look at a character and go, you know, this one just doesn't compete with the current power level of our game. We need to revise this character. And likewise, they... They really need to revise the character model, in my opinion. Yeah, but. well, they just did a, a major character model revision on Gangplank today, mm. who got a complete new character model and animations. And they seem to be doing that for all the old characters. I'm actually really looking forward to if they go back and ever redo uh, Master Yi, one of the signature characters of the game, who has a very old character model. I, I like that they do this a lot. I, I think it... It shows as a company that, hey, we can step back and revise the things we've got. We don't always just need to be making new stuff. And it, they, they do add a new character every two weeks. And they're usually unique. They don't put a character in unless they can give them some kind of unique mechanic that makes them cool. Graves has his smoke grenades. Uh, Riven has her combo attacks. Uh, I'm trying to think who else has come out since I started. Shivana turns into a bloody dragon. Fiery dragon. Bloody fiery dragon. Bloody when I'm done. She's hit a lot. So every time someone new gets added to the game, they have mm -hmm. something unique. Even the new guy, Volibear, 
he's the only character in the game that regenerates because he hits low health. I think that's kind of cool. He's got great uh, signature moves that are unique to him. Not the throwback, but... And the lightning. The lightning and the pain. And all that. Hey, Graves is cool. I'm not going to see Graves get ripped on in chat. I like my old cowboy. You some can't the, stop chat. Some of the saying. funniest lines in the game. <laughs> Everyone's a hero until you blow off a leg or two. All right. So, yeah, League of Legends still progressing. Uh, Pyro's recently joined us on League. As you know, basically it slowly consumes everyone we know. Everyone. Hey, an old join chat. Welcome, old. Now that we're nearing the end of the show. I guess I will have to watch that uh, uh, later, Pyro. So, yeah. Oh, if yeah. anyone wants to join us on League, we, uh, we usually play for at least an hour after the show. Is that, is that what we're doing today? Probably. I'm up for it. Yep. This is a surprise to me. I'll, uh, why, did you have something to do? No, but... Uh, I'll be my usual bloody sen. So I'm easy to find. But yeah, I think that'll do it for this week. Do we have anything to review for next week? Any plans? Uh, yes, I know, uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations. You've Perfect. asked me this twice today, and each time I've told you Pyro is playing Assassin's Creed. All right then. So yeah, today that's the thing. Is. All right, then. Uh, You're just talent. It's not your, it's not yep, your fault. Not, you can't remember anything. I barely pay attention. I just talk on the air. That's what we need a teleprompter for. I'm. We'll get one in the eventual studio, right, Pyro? Yes, we will. Of course, I it won't be a real teleprompter Burgundy? like presidents use. It'll just be a monitor, but still close enough. That's. Honestly, at this point, we could probably just make flashcards for my performance on this show. And have some, like, intern stand over there holding them. Dude, we need a Nerd Talk intern. Who do you have to talk to to hire an intern? We don't have to pay them, right? We just have to feed them and give them a box in the corner? I think you're thinking of cats. Oh. Or Studio we, Cat. We could, have, we could have Studio Cat be an intern. We could teach her oh. to, to man the broadcast lines. All right. I really don't think she'd be very good at it, though. Well, I think we've derailed this thing about enough. So, for this fine Tuesday, November 29th, I'm Sen. I'm Pixie. And I'm Pyrosim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. Bye, folks.